This recording will go over antihyperlipidemics. Various drugs are used to maintain or decrease blood lipid concentrations. Drugs used to lower lipoproteins are called antihyperlipidemics. Lipids such as cholesterol, triglycerides, and phospholipids are bound in the inner shell of protein, a carrier that transports lipids in the bloodstream. When there is an excess of one or more lipids in the bloodstream, the condition is known as hyperlipidemia. Please review in your textbook the table that contains serum lipid values. These are the lipids that you need to be responsible knowing to know and also the values that I want you to know. I want you to be familiar with the desirable value and the high risk values. So we'll start with cholesterol. Cholesterol, cholesterol the desired value is less than 200. High risk value is greater than 240. And cholesterol is the combined total of both HDL and LDL. Okay. So HDL, HDL is known as the good cholesterol, and it's different than the others. The other numbers we want to be low. HDL is your good cholesterol that you want high. So desired, you want higher than 60. High risk would be if your number is less than 35. LDL is your bad cholesterol. Desired number is less than 100. High risk greater than 160. And then finally, triglycerides. Desired number less than 150 high risk would be greater than 190. Before drugs to lower LDL and rise HDL are prescribed, non-drug therapy should be initiated to decrease cholesterol. Saturated fats and cholesterol in the diet should be reduced. Total fat intake should be 30% or less of caloric intake and cholesterol intake should be 300 milligrams a day or less. Patients should choose lean meats, especially fish and chicken. Exercise is, is an important aspect of non-pharmacologic methods to reduce cholesterol and increase HDL. For the older adult, exercise can be walking and bicycling. Smoking is another risk factor that should be eliminated. Smoking increases LDL cholesterol and decreases the good cholesterol HDL. If non-pharmacologic methods are ineffective for reducing LDL and very low density lipoproteins, VLDL, and hyperlipidemia remains, anti-hyperlipidemic drugs are prescribed to lower blood lipid levels. It must be emphasized to the patient that dietary changes need to be made and an exercise program followed even after drug therapy is initiated. The different classification of anti-hyperlipidemics that you are responsible for knowing include bile acid sequestrants, fibrates, nicotinic acid, cholesterol absorption inhibitors, HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, more commonly known as statins. Cholesteramine is your prototype bile acid sequestrant that you need to be familiar with. Bile acid sequestrants work by reducing LDL levels by binding with bile acids in the intestines. Side effects include constipation, flatulence, and cramping. Phenofibrate is your prototype fibrate. It works to reduce triglycerides, and very low density lipoproteins, or VLDLs. Um, contraindicated with anticoagulants because bleeding might occur. So think back um, to what you know about how drugs work and what is the reason that you would think that phenofibrate may be contraindicated with anticoagulants in terms of its properties. And hopefully you're thinking about protein binding, right? So phenofibrate is highly protein bound, which can cause it to displace other high, highly protein bound drugs, including warfarin, anticoagulant, putting the patient at risk for bleeding. The nicotinic acid you need to be familiar with is niacin. Niacin or vitamin B3 reduces VLDLs and LDLs. It is actually very effective at lowering cholesterol levels and its effect on the lipid profile is highly desirable. It has numerous side effects and large doses are required and as few as 20% of patients can initially tolerate niacin. However, with proper counseling, careful drug titration, and concomitant use of aspirin, the number of people being able to take the drug is actually increased. Side effects include GI distress, flushing, hepatic dysfunction, so we're watching those liver numbers, hyperglycemia, and hyperuricemia. Azetamib is your prototype cholesterol absorption inhibitor. It acts on the cells in the small intestine to inhibit cholesterol absorption. 
It decreases cholesterol from dietary absorption, reduces serum cholesterol, LDLs, and triglycerides. Azetamib causes only a small increase in HDL. It must be combined with a statin for optimum effect. Your next classification are the HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors, better known as statin. And rosuvastatin is your prototype statin. But also, if you look on your list of um, medications in this chapter, you'll see that statins frequently end with S-T-A-T-I-N, statin. That's your clue that you're dealing with a statin. The statin drugs work by inhibiting an enzyme, the HMG-CoA reductase, um, and, and cholesterol synthesis. By inhibiting cholesterol synthesis in the liver, this group of antihyperlipidemics decrease the concentration of cholesterol, decrease LDL, and slightly increase HDL cholesterol. Statins are useful in decreasing coronary artery disease and reducing mortality rates. In regards to side effects, GI disturbances, headaches, muscle cramps, and fatigue are early complaints. With all statins, serum liver enzymes should be monitored and an annual eye examination is needed because cataract form formation may result. The patient should report immediately any muscle aches or weakness, which can lead to rhabdomyolysis, a muscle disintegration that can become fatal. If hyperlipidemic therapy is withdrawn, cholesterol and LDL levels return to pretreatment levels. The patient taking an anti-hyperlipidemic drug should understand that anti-hyperlipidemic therapy is a lifetime commitment for maintaining a decrease in ser serum lipid levels. Abruptly stopping the statin drug could cause a three-fold rebound effect that may cause death from acute myocardial infarction. Reference values for homocysteine are 4 to 17. Homocysteine is a byproduct of protein and is found in eggs, beef, chicken, and cheddar cheese. A high level of homocysteine is, has been linked to cardiovascular disease, stroke, and Alzheimer's disease. It may also promote blood clotting. And it has been stated that an increase in serum, serum homocysteine can damage the inner lining of blood vessels and promote a thickening and loss of flexibility in the vessels. Three vitamins that can lower serum homocysteine levels are vitamin B6, vitamin B12, and folic acid. High sensitivity C-reactive protein reference values are less than 0.175 milligrams per liter. The standard C-reactive protein is produced in the liver in response to tissue injury and inflammation. The high sensitivity C-reactive protein is a, high sens a highly sensitive test for detecting the inflammatory protein that can be associated with cardiovascular and peripheral vascular disease. A positive high sensitivity C-reactive protein test can indicate that the patient is at high risk for coronary artery, artery disease making it a valuable test for predicting coronary artery disease. Please pause the video to review the purple nursing process box for statins and then resume the video to see if you pulled out the same important information that I'll discuss with you. So in terms of assessment, assess vital signs and baseline serum chemistry values such as cholesterol, triglycerides, AST, ALT, um, CPK, Obtain a medical history. Statin drugs are contraindicated for patients with liver disorders, and they've also contraindicated for patients who are pregnant. In regards to nursing diagnosis, um, tissue integrity, anxiety, um, knowledge deficits could all be nursing diagnoses that you're dealing with um, the patient who has taken a statin. In regards to planning, the patient's cholesterol level will be less than 206 to 8 weeks. Remember, with the total cholesterol, the desired level is less than 200. Also, the patient will be able to choose foods low in fat, cholesterol, and complex sugars. In regards to nursing intervention, monitor the patient's blood lipid levels. And we talked about at the beginning of the recording which numbers, which, um, numbers you need to know for testing purposes. So cholesterol, HDL, LDL, triglycerides. You need, you need to know the desirable level and then also the high risk levels. Uh, monitor lab tests for liver function. So ALT and AST. Again, you have to know those normal values. So what's your normal value for ALT? Hopefully you know 4 to 36. Your normal value for AST? 0 to 35. You can also look at ALP and GGT, which are other enzymes that are found in the liver that may be elevated um, if, with liver dysfunction. 
Antihyperlipidemic drugs can cause liver disorders. So when you think about statins or anti-cholesterol medications, you should definitely be thinking about liver function. Observe for signs and symptoms of GI upset. Taking the drug with sufficient water or with meals may alleviate some of the discomfort. In regards to patient teaching, we need to emphasize the need to comply with the drug regimen to lower blood lipids and let the patient know it may be several weeks before the blood lipid levels decline. Um, let them know they're going to be using or um, they're going to be required to do regular testing to monitor those blood lipid levels. Uh, advise them they're also going to have their liver function tests, liver enzymes um, um, drawn, and so we can monitor how well the liver is functioning. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, pregnancy, right? The statins are contraindicated in pregnancy, so that's something that they, uh, your female patients would want to be aware of. Instruct the patient to have annual eye examination to report any changes in visual acuity, because if you remember, uh, statins are associated with cataracts. Teach patients to mix cholesteramine powder well in water or juice. Advise patients that constipation may occur with cholesteramine and to increase fluid intake and food bulk should help with al uh, alleviating the problem. Explain to the patients that flushing is common with niacin and should decrease with continued use of the drug. Advise patients that large doses of niacin can cause vasodilation and produce dizziness and faintness or syncope. Explain to the patients that azetamib may cause headaches and GI upset and if it continues to notify the healthcare provider. In terms of side effects of statins, explain to patients that serum liver enzyme levels are periodically monitored. Encourage the patient to promptly report any unexplained muscle tenderness or weakness that may be caused by rhabdo. Caution patients not to abruptly stop taking their statin drug because a serious rebound effect might occur that could lead to acute myocardial infarction and possible death. Before stopping a statin, the patient should talk to his or her healthcare provider. In regards to diet, regard, explain to the patient that GI discomfort is a common problem with most antihyperlipidemics. Suggest increase, increasing fluid intake when taking the medication. Encourage the patient to consume foods that are low in animal fats, cholesterol, and complex sugars. In terms of evaluation, evaluate effectiveness of the antihyperlipidemic drug. The patient's cholesterol level should be within the desired range. Determine also that the patient is maintaining a low-fat, low-cholesterol diet.